Well, it may be a little early to declare victory, I'm not sure, but uh, we... <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we told our folks to vote late, so they'll still be trickling in, I'm sure. For... Thank you very, very much. While we're, uh, while we're waiting early in the process, I wanted to, uh, to come in here and speak to you from my heart. Tell you how much I appreciate you. Tell you how blessed that Jerry and I feel to have friends like you. It means everything in the world to us. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you and what you uh, have done. Uh, I want to thank Jerry, who's been my strong right arm. I want to thank my, my family. My son uh, Tony is uh, here with me tonight, or my grandson Nick. Uh, my uh, little babies are in the bus. They need to get home tonight, so uh, we're turning it up a little earlier than usual tonight, I suppose. But, but we, uh, we, uh, we appreciate you. I want to thank my, my mom, who's... Uh, in the hospital tonight, recuperating. She's been a little bit uh, under the weather. I want to thank my grandkids, uh, everybody who has put their heart and soul into uh, their support of me and what we've been doing. I want to thank the people who travel with me, the people who have been with me from the very beginning and travel all these roads and all these miles uh, with me, mostly with a smile on their face and, and putting up with me and and working for the cause, working for the cause that we all believe in so much. Uh, I want to thank my supporters in South Carolina. Thank you very, very much. <clears throat> I mentioned Congressman Gresham Barrett and so many more. Uh, Steve King's been in here from Iowa, and we've had so many people in here, hundreds of people in here from Tennessee. Thank you, Tennesseans. <clears throat> hey, buddy. Good to see you, buddy. People that I have known uh, just about all my life, people who know me best and have been with me uh, the longest, and everybody else uh, from across the country who, uh, who have meant so much to us. My friends, we will, uh, we will always be bound by uh, a close bond because we have uh, traveled a very special road together uh, for a very special purpose. You know, it's never been about me. It's never even been about you. It's been about our country and the future of our country. <clears throat> about our country, about the future of our country, and about our party's role in that future. And because of your efforts and because of our working together, our party is being required to look itself in the mirror, decide where it's going, decide who it is. Our country needs strong leadership, needs our party to step up, assume the battle of leadership again. But we need to remember that we need to deserve to lead, and that's what all this is about, is deserving to lead. <laughs> As you know, we like to talk a whole lot about our country. We have been blessed in so many different ways. We live by any measure in the greatest country in the history uh, of the world, and it's every generation's obligation to do its part to make sure it stays that way. And in order to do that, we need to have a firm understanding of how it got that way. And my friends, it got that way because of strong, consistent, conservative beliefs that founded this country. <laughs> These are the beliefs that form the principles, that form the underpinnings of this country from the very beginning. Our founding fathers had it right, right off the bat. They understood the wisdom of the ages. They understood that there's a certain thing called human nature, both the good side and the not so good side sometimes. They understood that in this old changing world there are some eternal truths. And they stated them in the documents right from the very beginning. They reminded us in the Declaration of Independence that our basic rights come not from any government, but from God. They set forth in the, <clears throat> in the Constitution of the United States the way we were going to separate power out in this country, both at the Washington level and throughout the country, a little system called federalism. Not many people talk about it much, but it just kind of underpins everything else we do. Because our founders understood 
that a government big enough and powerful enough, centralized enough, is big enough and powerful enough to take anything away from you. And we're not going to go down that direction in this country, and we never have. We've understood, as they understood, the dangers of having too much power in too few hands. And this is the foundation on which we're built. This is the reason we're here tonight. Free people in a free country. These are institutions on which we built a country. And what a country it's turned out to be. This is what it's all about. Keeping it that way, doing our part, stepping up to the plate, stepping up for service, stepping up to try to do the right thing, even when the right thing is not easy. Institutions such as the rule of law. Well, I needed democracies around when we started out on our little experiment in this world. Most people are governed by democracies now. Now the rule of law is the norm which everyone wants to emulate. It's based on the propositions that judges will follow the law and the Constitution and not make it up as they go along. <clears throat> based upon the value of a market economy and free people doing free things in a free society, unafraid to trade with their neighbors, based upon the notion that we don't tax and regulate our people to death, based upon the notion that we don't spend money that we don't have, and we sure don't borrow against our grandchildren's future. <laughs> it's the kind of country that has let a small town boy from Lawrenceburg, Tennessee grow up knowing that if he behaved himself and pretty much played by the rules that he had a chance to achieve the American dream. Where I grew up, it wasn't all about dividing up the pie and rich versus poor and boss versus employee and all that kind of stuff. It was about making the pie bigger yeah. and going out there and enjoying a free country. <laughs> That's why we talk about the Reagan coalition so much, my friends, because these are, the, these are the tenets on which the Reagan coalition was built. And they're just as alive and strong today as that they have ever been. They're alive in the hearts and minds of the American people. Those are the principles that have made us a successful party over the years. And those are the principles that's made us the freest, most prosperous, most powerful country in the history of civilization. And when we've stood for those principles, when we've stood strong, the way many of us had an opportunity to do in 1994 and came to town and were able to pass welfare reform, five major tax cuts, balance the budget four years in a row, stand tall for the Second Amendment, stand tall for the rights of the unborn. Yeah. <clears throat> People haven't changed their minds about those things. We need to convince them we haven't changed our minds about them either. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> My friends, we, uh, we live in the country that sacrificed more blood for the freedom of other people than all the other countries in the world combined. We are proud of that tradition. It's a tradition of honor. It's a tradition of sacrifice for the greater good. Now, most Americans are not called upon to shed their blood, but we're called upon from time to time to make our own sacrifices. We're called upon from time to time to make our own contribution. And my friends, that's what you've done. That's what you're doing. And I'm so proud to stand with you in that regard, and we'll always stand strong together in that regard. We'll always stand strong together. And I can't thank you enough for that. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stand strong. Stand strong. <laughs>